Hi there, uh, I'm just gonna be a video about the uh, neutral option method and uh, it's actually pretty interesting. Um, I'm not gonna solve the uh, this function that I wrote here with a neutral option method uh, yet uh, because I wanna show you first what this method is based on, what it does and why it may not converge. After that, I'm gonna be, you know, doing some example, making some example and um, that's pretty, that's gonna be it. Uh, but at the very first stage, I want to tell you what the method is and what it does. So basically, uh, let's start with uh, this function, and I'm not gonna solve it, by the way. So this function is uh, is made by plottable elements. Uh, so therefore, is uh, is plottable itself. So x square is actually a parabola. Um, and uh, minus two is actually, you know, moving the center towards the, uh, moving the center towards the left, and uh, no, toward the light, the right, towards the right, so negative two towards the right, um, in at two, and uh, negative one uh, is actually out of the parentheses, uh, so it just, um, you know, uh, lowering our um, and it's just lowering it uh, by um, by negative one. So basically, even though we don't know anything about this function, if we go back to our calculus one class, uh, we know that uh, we can actually plot it. You know, even though we don't know anything about it. So uh, this is one. Uh, this is. Um, if we do, uh, this is gonna be negative one. Uh, if we do here, um, we have three. We can say that this is actually a parabola, which is gonna look roughly like this, like more or less. In just plain calculus. Right, so this is gonna be a parabola, and uh, we suppose that this one is two. So I choose it's gonna be um, two negative one. All right, so basically this is um, this is a parabola, and uh, what the Newton Raphson method does is that okay, um, if we take a point that uh, and we start with a point that is close. To, we, we don't know, we, we can't follow the curve, all right? It's curves are hard to follow, but we can choose, and we don't know whether it's gonna go, but we can choose a point, like a closer point, a close point, like um, this one, like 2.6, and we can basically see uh, what's gonna be its value at uh, 2.6, all right? And we've, we're gonna find this point here. After that, we're gonna basically find the followed line, so find the tangent line to that point, which is gonna be like this, all right? Um, so basically this is gonna be the tangent line. So uh, we end up here, and here, uh, this point here is actually a better point, a closer point than 2.6, the point we started with, which is going to be something. And this one is going to be something. Wait, I don't know, I'm not doing the computation, just showing you. It's going to be something. Something. Alright, it's going to be something. But I'm just showing you the, the, the computation. So you basically um, do the slope, uh, find the slope and find the, the tangent line. Uh, and here, this point is going to be closer to 3, which is the actual point in which the parabola intersects with the axis. Um, and, um, and then we go on and on and on. And this is actually going to be the, 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 the neutral option method. However, there is a problem. Um, this method may, not, may be terribly slow to converge if we are so far away uh, from the... Um, and we might end up so far away because you know if we if we take a point like here, okay, like here, and we go down, 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 like here, the the tangent line 
will be you know bringing us here like uh, far away from from that but if we take like two all right two as a point and we try to find the tangent line here well you pass calculus so you should know what's gonna happen um, the angular coefficient is gonna be zero so the tangent line is basically the slope is gonna be zero so the tangent line is basically gonna be you know this one but is gonna be parallel to uh, to the x and therefore is never gonna intersect the x and is never gonna give us a point so what's gonna be our next point in order to to try to get closer to the core well nothing nothing at all uh, so the point the the, the method stops uh, and therefore is not gonna converge it's just gonna be you know stuck here so this is one thing to keep in mind um, and why the the method may fail so um, first thing first let's do a real computation okay so this was just you know the um, the, the, the preview of the method. Uh, let's just see it in action. So let's start with something like, um, I don't know, like a function like f of x equal to um, x to the third minus x minus two equal to zero. And um, we're gonna start with x zero equal to two as our initial point. So gonna write the formula for the Newton Robson method we have xn plus 1 equal to xn minus f of x1 over f one f first of xn <coughs> that's right so basically uh we have to find the derivative everything is going to be clear uh in this very moment with this very step so f is actually x cube minus x minus two equal to zero well we can we don't really have to write equal to zero it's fine anyway so f first uh, it's actually the derivative so uh, it's like saying d dx so um i'm pretty sure you can actually uh derive this this function for in terms of x because you know uh generally when you take this exam like uh, mathematical methods you have already passed calculus one uh linear algebra and calculus two so <laughs> this is actually going to be three x squared minus one uh, i'm not gonna go over how to do the derivative i mean it's it's, it's fine i mean yeah um, i can make a video about it but you know it, it, you should have passed calculus by now so uh if you don't know how to do something simple and easy like that then just just go back to calculus all right so we said that x x zero is actually equal to two uh, therefore, um, x1 is actually going to be equal to xn, so basically the um, former uh, x, so in this case it's going to be, there is no former x, it's the only former x is going to be my starting point, so uh, my starting x, so 2, so in this case it's going to be 2 minus f of x1, so basically um, the value um, inside uh, of 2 inside uh, f so it will be 2 at uh, return minus 2 minus 2 over uh, f first xn so basically the value of 2 inside the first derivative so in this case 3 times 2 um, squared uh, 3 times 2 squared uh, minus 1 so basically we have 2 minus 8 minus 4 over 3 times 4 minus 1 uh, which gives us 2 minus 4 over 12 minus 1 
which gives us 2 minus 4 over 11, which gives us 22 minus 4 over 11, so 18 over 11, which is roughly 1.63. All right, so we have basically found our new uh, x1, which is 1.63, and we go on. So our x2 is actually going to be uh, 1.63, uh, minus, because it's a deformer, um, x1 that we had just found, minus the value of 1.63 into uh, the function over the value of 1.63 into uh, the first derivative. So 1.63 into here over 1.63 into here. Uh, therefore, um, we're going to have 1.63 uh, raised to the power of 3 uh, minus 1.63 minus 2, everything over 3 times 1.63 squared. Um, yeah, 1.63 squared uh, minus 1. So this is actually going to give me 1.63 minus uh, 4.33 minus 1.63 minus 2, everything over uh, 3 times 2.66 minus 1, so it's 1.63 uh, minus 0 0.7 over uh, 7.98 minus 1, which gives me, uh, well, it gives me 1.63 minus 0 0.7 over uh, 6.98, which gives me uh, 11.38 minus 0 0.7 everything over 6.98, which gives me 10.68 over uh, 6.98, so 1.53. Uh, there we go. Then we can go on and get our x3 and x4 and x5 and so on, and go on and on and on and on. Uh, but uh, this is pretty much it. Uh, so um, this is the formula, remember it. Uh, so it's x n um, minus so the, the the initial point the initial value for x x zero minus f of x one so the value of x uh, inside the, the the function over uh, the value of, of x inside the first derivative. So it's pretty straightforward, um, but you know you can understand that. Um, you gotta know how to derive a function. So this one was fairly simple, like a very, very, very simple function. But there may be some some functions that are not so simple. So you gotta you gotta know uh, that uh, you gotta know the deriv the first derivative of uh, each function that you wanna use this method on. And you also have to keep in mind that this method may not converge as I show you. Uh, so, you know, those are the two things that uh, you got to remember and you got to keep in mind while uh, when you are doing the uh, neutral option method. And I'm going to make a few more examples um, uh, in the next few videos. So, um, I hope it helps. Uh, as always, uh, stay tuned for the very next video about the neutral option method. Bye and cheers for now.